Let's get right to it. All kinds of comments about, am I gonna put a doubler in? What am I gonna do for a lower gear ratio? <laughs> well, hi there, welcome to BSF Recovery Team. We finally got the record in the shop. We're gonna give it a good look over and uh, see what we gotta do to the record uh, before our next event. Uh, but before we do that, uh, what else have we been doing in the shop? Well, take a look at this. Well, right now I'm holding up a door. But, uh, Which door is that? This one is from the uh, off-road record games off our uh, wonderful Zuzu Rodeo that, matter of fact, you and Chris uh, rode in on that. It's our Suzu Rodeo with the Passport logo come off. We did have some fans that noticed it wasn't a rodeo and said it's a Passport. Oh, oh well. Same thing, <laughs> only different. Same thing, only different. Yeah, because they were made by the same company. And then uh, we're going to hang it up there. Gonna hang it up there uh, with the uh, spare door for the record. We uh, hung a couple of doors on the wall. Well, that looks like a good place to keep them. For decoration, um, that record door was off the original record, and it's actually a spare door. It's still functioning. It's not dented. Still um, got the glass in it. Still got the glass in it. Yeah. So that's actually our spare door. Someday we might put it on the record, but the one that's on there, even though it's dented up, the window still rolls up and down, so that's good enough for me. What else have we been doing? Well, we've been finishing up the bathroom. I promised Mara that we would finish that up, and I want to get that finished before we start doing some of the other improvements in the shop. So we're putting some barn doors up to divide out the utility room portion from the bathroom and Mara wants that old school look. So we're roughing up this uh, header here that we're gonna hang the brackets for the barn door. And what that's for is we are going to do a double bypass door kit uh, to block off all the utilities from the bathroom portion of the bathroom. And we're going to do a, a double bypass door uh, with these hangers. Uh, seat cover really liked these hangers when she saw them with the gears turning. Thought that was really appropriate for the shop. So we have all the hardware here. but. We got to modify it a little bit because, of course, we can't do anything normal. The spacing inside that bathroom is 10 foot wide. But they don't make this kit for a 10 foot space. That's what we have inside that bathroom is 10 foot from wall to wall. So we got to do some modifications. Uh, we've been buying some extra pieces and we got uh, to modify all of these pieces to make it work with this uh, hanger and then of course we got the lumber uh, Mara's been uh, been uh, using a wire wheel on the lumber uh, to roughen it up make it look aged and then we got to stain it build the doors all that stuff so we've been working on that so now let's take a look at the record here and uh, one of the things uh, we want to look at is Titan is here and he was very impressed with uh, the step and how it held up when we took out that rock. Let's take a look at that. Your, uh, your step is still intact. 
And uh, can't believe how well that held up. Still opens and closes, but it is a little loose. <laughs> It just looks like the vinyl spacers that we use is we had to do something a little different installing it to your truck. Yep. That's where we install it on the Jeeps. We use a tapered standoff. But on this, we used a, uh, just a couple of spacers. And it looks like we gave them a little bit of a squash. And we'll tighten so. it back down and it should be good as new. Yeah. Held up a little better than the record box. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys watch that video at home, if you've seen that video of him cutting off the... You took a... a I mean, just a huge amount of rock off the side of that rock face. I can't believe it. Yeah. She held up amazing. Amazing. Did something right. <laughs> so, what else have we got going on with the record here? We Let's, have uh, we have a problem with our rear spring. Spring. Uh, the top leaf, or the main leaf, and the eye is still up uh, in the shackle, but our other springs are separated from it. Why is that? These leaves got caught underneath the mounting bracket, the spring hanger bracket. So we gotta figure out how to get them back where they belong. We must have stretched out the suspension pretty good back there at some point. We also seem to have shifted our lift block again on this side. Probably sheared the spring center bolt too. So we're gonna have to take this stack apart. So, let's take a look at a couple other things that we have to do to the record. Or, maybe that we should do. First of all, we banged in this fender pretty good. But, while I was there, I had to readjust my hood latch so I could get my hood closed. And, uh, my hood's closed all the way. Yeah, that's ugly, but you know what? I have a replacement fender, but I don't know that I'm going to put it on just yet. One of those things where, you know, the wrecker gets beat up, and if I take it apart to redo everything and make it look nice, it's going to be down for a while. And this is the only recovery truck I have. So I don't want to take it apart and have it apart for weeks on end, um, fixing it all up really nice. and. Uh, maybe miss out on some recoveries. So I think we're probably going to let this go for now. We're able to close the hood. I think it's going to stay the way it is, at least for this season. So one of the other things that we had happen is down here on the steering. We had this shaft pull out of this heim joint. So we're definitely going to have to, oh, and it's loose again. We're definitely after going to get a new heim joint here. And uh, I think the threads are still okay on the shaft. The aluminum in here is compromised. We're going to have to definitely get one of those. But I haven't ordered it yet because I don't remember what size this shaft is. So let's measure that right now so I can order the right part. And I'll show you a real easy way to measure that round shaft. The two sizes that it can be is 3 quarters and 5 eighths. So we have a 3 quarter wrench and a 5 eighths open end wrench here. And we're going to see which one, nope, the 5 8 doesn't fit over, but the 3 quarter does. So guess what size it is. Looks like we still have a leak here. I'm not sure what that is. We'll have to figure it out. Might still be one of my power steering lines, might be an oil cooler line. It's hard to say. We'll have to clean it up and then uh, see where the leak is. And one last thing we can't forget. We have to... Uh, fix our hard sling here, or our bar. We broke that out of Sand Hollow. Kind of like Rory says, you know, the terrain out there uh, doesn't work with these bars. Some of it does, some of it doesn't. Um, we use the bar around here a lot, so we're definitely going to have to fix that. Um, this whole setup is uh, old and wore out. Not sure if uh, We'll build a new one if we have time for that, or if we're just going to repair this one. We'll see how that goes. We'll take a look at our uh, winch rope here, and it's holding up pretty good. Uh, this is from uh, Yankum Ropes. They also make uh, synthetic winch rope. We've been using this one for a little over a year now. It's holding up pretty good, but you can definitely see some wear on it on the end here that gets used all the time. Maybe we'll have to... Uh, Talk to Alan and see if we can get one of those needles to uh, 
rethread this so we can uh, cut off the worn part and uh, rethread a loop into the end and keep using it. Now, I'm sure all of you are wondering what kind of upgrades I've been thinking about doing uh, since we've been out at the record games. And uh, one of the upgrades that's going to be coming real soon after I get some uh, measurements and calculations and stuff is uh, the Elkan Spring who makes the patented Orbit Eye. Uh, you might remember it from uh, our trip back from Easter Jeep Safari last year. Has offered to make me some front springs uh, for this truck using the Orbit Eye uh, that should keep me from breaking shackle bolts. So that's an upgrade that's coming, but before we can do that, we have to uh, we have to get a bunch of measurements and calculations for him. We have to figure out where we're going to make our pivot, and we're going to have to put a pivot below the frame and some shackles to give that big orbit eye enough room to move back without hitting our frame right here. And then we also have to get him a spring length, um, the amount of arc that we want, and uh, of course, in order to calculate the spring rate, he needs a front end weight of the truck and a rear end weight of the truck. So we're gonna have to weigh our axles individually and see what this truck weighs. That'll be coming soon. We'll, uh, we'll film all of that for you. And maybe we'll even get him to film or take some pictures of uh, actually manufacturing the springs for us. So, what about other upgrades? Well, let's get right to it. All kinds of comments about, am I gonna put a doubler in? What am I gonna do for a lower gear ratio? Let's start out by talking about the gear ratio that's in the truck right now. It's a stock Turbo 400 and a stock 205 transfer case. We have changed the gear ratio to 513s. We did that way back when we built the truck. And we're running on 37 inch tires. So, just to give you an idea, the final drive ratio at the ground is equivalent to a stock truck with a 410 gear ratio and stock size tires. If you do the math, that's the final drive ratio that we're running right now. Exactly the same as a stock truck, stock tires with a 410 ratio. So the question is, is do I want a lower gear ratio and how do I want to do it? Do I want to do it with a doubler or do I want to do it with changing the ring and pinion again? We could go to 538s. If we went to 538s, that would be the equivalent of a stock truck with a stock tire size and 456s. The other option we could do is go with a lower geared transfer case. Now, of course, the doubler would give me a lot more options in my final drive ratio. And of course, a bunch of you are telling me I should do that so I can do front wheel digs. I hate to break it to you, but I don't need a doubler to do front wheel digs. All I need is to twin stick the 205 case. Rory doesn't have a doubler and trail mater. It's just a twin stick case so he can do front wheel drive only. But here's a thought for you. If I change the ring and pinion, I'll be in there and I can change out the Grizzly locker to an E-locker. That way I can unlock the rear end, put cutting brakes in. That's where we would just break one rear wheel. And with the open differential or the Eaton e-locker disengaged, then we would have three wheel dig. That might be kind of neat. Decisions, decisions. I'm not sure what we're going to do yet. Another thing you guys have been asking is how I keep this transmission cool with all the work that this truck does. Well, it does have the diesel radiator in it with the big tranny cooler that the uh, diesel had. And it has an external tranny cooler. But one of the other secrets that I have that helps me keep the tranny cool is it has the torque converter from the diesel in it. It's a very low stall torque converter and large, carries lots of fluid. That helps keep the heat down. Well, with that low stall, sometimes that keeps me from getting enough engine RPM to build enough torque or horsepower to spin the tires in a high traction situation. In the low traction situations that uh, I commonly run in around here, it's not a problem. 
but when we have real high traction, it can become a problem for me. So that's something to think about too. Should I take it apart and put a little higher stall torque converter in there so I can build a little bit more horsepower before uh, it gets to the rear wheels? Anyway, those are decisions that I'm going to have to make, but nothing's going to happen real soon. Like I said before, the problem I have is this is my only recovery truck. If I take it apart and start making all kinds of changes, that's downtime for me. And we're coming into the season where I need this truck. One of the other problems I encountered out there was uh, sucking air into my hydraulic system. And that's a problem that I run into occasionally around here, um, but usually I just turn off the pump when we're in a situation like that or before we get into a situation like that. And it's not too much of a problem. Out there where uh, we were in some angles that were pretty extreme and wanted to use our hydraulic pump at the same time, it became a problem. The reason it's a problem is because the hydraulic reservoir sits right here behind this panel. It's long, only about this tall. Yeah, about that tall. And the pickup for it is right here in the front of the tank. So guess what happens when you get on a real steep incline? Well, yes, all the fluid goes to the back of the tank and we can suck air right here. So what's the cure for that? Well, the ultimate cure would be to build a long, uh, narrow tank that so when you tilt it, uh, the fluid doesn't move away from the pickup. That's a big modification, and I don't know if we're going to get to that. Um, I do know that it would help a lot if I move the pickup from here to the center of the tank. So we might be doing that in the near future. I don't know for sure. Again, I'm reluctant to uh, make big changes or plan big changes to the truck um, because we'll be needing it this summer. You know, we might have to think about building a second recovery truck. Look at you. Hold on. One of the other things I was thinking about is all the equipment on the deck here, just lying around, floating around. Yep. Um, the high lift jack. I was wondering if there was a way that we could build a mount or have a mount uh, to put that on the side of the boom here. Well, what, do you, what do you think, Troy? You know, we've got those door hangers that uh, the high lift jack door hangers they, they either work on the hood hinges or the door hinges yeah why don't we just mount or you know like weld them on there i think that would work out great yeah that would probably work i gotta set up yeah because you can't screw anything to there because nope. the boom yeah right. you'd have to weld them on but i mean they're still like every other every other piece of that so there's no reason we couldn't weld them i got a set uh, the prototypes are on the Gladiator right now. You guys want to Let's go take a look. Okay, cool. So real simple ordeal. They mount right on the side, right to the door hinges for when they mount to the Jeep. And uh, so the prototypes don't look exactly the cars. The shape of them are pretty similar, but they have our logo in them. Uh -huh. But otherwise, this is it. Two bowls come in from the back. Wing nut on this side and two rubber washers essentially that will allow you to tighten down so it doesn't rattle. And it'll just be, I mean, it'll take seconds for you guys to get it on and off when you need it. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, I think that'll work out easy. We yeah. can just weld them on. Yeah, they look very nice too. Well, what other products are you coming out with? Well, we've got some um, door hangers. Uh, so for the four doors, they work, well, two or four doors. Um, I was, so I have had a set uh, for a long time when I take my doors off the Jeep and they hang on the wall. And then when I take them off the wall, I got this big bracket that sticks out. And every, the wife and I got to talking about all the other ways on the market mm -hmm. to hang your doors when you own a Jeep. And they all take up a ton of space. So we came up with a design where when it's in use, it folds out from the wall, you hang your doors. When you put your doors back on the Jeep, it pops up, folds flat against the wall and takes up no space. So that's a new one coming out. Cool. I'm pretty proud of that one because it took some ingenuity to make that work. <laughs> and then um, uh, another new one, you know, we bought the Gladiator because we needed something to do some R&D work. So I also was, you guys are talking about, you, or you're talking about just kind of the same thing, where to stack all your gear. Well, when you got a truck bed, it all bounces around back there. And when you off-road, uh, as you know, it, everything yes. bounces around back there. 
So we came out with and designed some uh, molly panels that mount inside the bed uh, around all three corners. And then, so that we just actually released. And then I'm coming up with one for the tailgate itself is when it folds down so you can strap gear right there. So the stuff that you use most often, I figure everyone would want to mount there. So we've got that. And then um, the last one is, we've had a tailgate table for the JK forever that we solved some solutions with that was, every other one on the market took two hours to install and use nut certs. So my wife actually came up with a really cool design that that mounted in five minutes. Well, it doesn't fit on the JLs. And so all the JL guys have been griping forever. So we've got a new bracket coming that'll fit the JLs. So I'll have that actually on Friday. Oh, so, so yeah. That's what we got going on right tailgate now. Tailgate table that'll mount on the JLs. Yep, tailgate table mount on the JLs, the new high lift jack hangers. Molly panels, oh, I almost forgot. Um, the diesel, it's really difficult to find skid plates for. Uh huh. So we designed skid plates. Those I've prototypes will be cut Monday. So I, I plan to have those 30 days. So by, let's call it Memorial Day, we'll uh -huh. have skid plates for the diesel. Oh, wow. So yeah, we've been busy. We've been busy, busy with that truck. Real busy. Yeah. So if you want to check out Titan's products, you can go to their YouTube channel. Uh, they have videos of their products and installs. They have videos of some of their R&D. R&D, yep. And uh, you can check that out. Uh, what's your YouTube channel title? T Titan Off-Road. Titan Off-Road LLC to be exact. Titan Off-Road LLC. And uh, so don't forget to check them out. They have a YouTube channel or check out their website, which is TitanOffRoadLLC.com. Thanks for watching. What do we got going on here? Oh, a new list. Huh. Work on the wrecker, one line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be easy. Yeah, we'll no problem. Yeah.